how PPC works. These are the, the key topics that I was hoping to cover on in this regard. And this is, rem just remember, this is, this is the mechanics of PPC, paid search, you know, advert position. As, as, as we saw in the previous uh, slide with the screenshot, you can see there are three slots at the top for sponsored links, and then there are a series down the side of the screen. Obviously, it goes one, two, three at the top, four, five, six, seven, eight down the side. Unsurprisingly, if you're in positions one, two, and three, you're going to get far more clicks than four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down, down the right-hand margin. So the question then becomes, how do I make sure that I'm in position one as paid search or as high as I can possibly get? The answer to that, which we'll talk about in a bit, bit more detail in a moment, is a mixture of how much you are prepared to pay per click, which is lovely, transparent, easy, and your quality score. And the quality score is something which we will talk about in a moment, and that is less straightforward, and it's not 100% well understood. In the same way as we were, if, we, if we were talking about search engine optimization, we'd be talking about the algorithm, and we'd say the basics are understood, but exactly how it works, no one really knows. Very similar way to the quality score, which we're going to talk about with paid search. The basics are understood. Best practice, good things to do is understood, but exactly the mixture and the measure of it, no one knows. Then we'll talk about position and click-through, which we just said. Market share in the UK. I'm not going to sh shock anyone that Google's going to come out top on that. And then some of the things you need to think about in a paid search campaign. So, here we go. How PPC works. These are the three slots you really want. And then four, five, six, etc. So, where your advert appears is a combination of your bid, how much you're willing to pay, all things being equal. If all of these guys... If their quality score, which, is, which just remember we're going to talk about quality score in a moment, if all of these guys' quality scores were identical, then this person is prepared to pay most per click. That is why they're number one. And that's the person who's got the second highest bid. In an, it's like an auction. So, the quality score. Big topic um, and in, an important one, probably the first important thing we've talked about right now. And the quality score is Google's attempt and the quality score is a Google term, but, you know, Bing, we do something very similar. Um, it's Google's attempt to get some sort of a feel for how good your advert is. By how good your advert is, what, what I really mean is how likely it is to get clicked on, because Google wants it to be clicked on, because that's when they make their money, and also how good the content is that sits behind it, i.e. how happy the, the user will be that they clicked on it, and they made a good decision. Because you can imagine from Google's point of view, if people keep clicking their adverts and the sites they keep getting are rubbish, then that's bad for Google because people will stop clicking on their adverts because they know they're not getting anything useful out of it. So what they want to do, which they did with the quality score, is try to come up with a way of, of uh, quantifying that and saying, how good is your advert? And, the way that, and if you have a high quality score, what that actually does is it allows you to get higher up in the positions than you otherwise would be. So just as an example, let's assume here for a moment um, that Ford has a much stronger quality score than Kia. Oh, again, no one knows exactly where the boundary is, but Kia could be prepared to pay significantly more than Ford in order to get number one position, but Ford are still in number one because they've got that more significant quality score. So it can actually undo your bidding strategy. So you know, if two people are prepared to bid the same, then obviously the one with the higher, higher quality score wins. But you will also be more likely to appear higher in the results for less money if you have a strong quality score, which is why it's so important. And it's, you, know, you need to take it seriously. Okay, so what is it, you ask, rhetorically? And I will rhetorically answer. The quality score is some combination of, no one knows exactly because that's the Google secret source, your click-through history, which is basically, you know, when you set up an AdWords account in Google, Google knows you've done it, Google can track all your activity, it can track how many times your adverts have been shown, how many times they've been clicked on. If, you, if your campaign is the sort of campaign that gets clicked on a lot, Google will know that because it's kept a record of it. And that will con contribute positively to your quality score because Google wants adverts that get clicked on. If you've got a campaign that has, just as an example, is very badly run, very badly managed, horrible advert text, hardly ever gets clicked on, Google's going to give you a very poor quality score because it doesn't want to show your adverts. What's the point? They're not going to get clicked on. 
So you'll have a low quality score and you'll have to pay a higher price to get anywhere in paid search than someone with a very good quality score. So managing your campaign well not only gives you cost effectiveness, but it also gives you a good quality score and reduces the amount of money you have to bid for a given position in the results. So it's your account and keyword history and or some factor of that and the actual content, the content of the advert. So if someone's, just as an example, searching for small car, does your advert include the phrase small car? If it does, then anyone who searched for small car is probably more likely to click on it so it gets a higher quality score. In addition, does the page which the advert points the audience to, if they do click on it, does that page have reference of small car? Because then it's likely to be relevant to the advert, the advert is relevant to the key phrase, the whole thing makes sense, you get a good quality score. So what it's trying to do, remember, is judge whether or not this advert is good and relevant. And the way that it does that is click through history, content of the advert, content of the landing page, and content of the site. Again, Google's got these spiders going around. It knows, if you don't know what a spider is, you're going to have to look at a search engine optimization module. Um, it's got spiders going around, so it, it, it can figure out what your site is about by the words that you're using on the site. And if the words you use on the site are similar to what the audience just, what, you, what the user just searched for, and it so happens you've got the right advert, you've got a landing page, you've got a site, they're all using that same vocabulary, then it's a pretty easy thing for Google to say, well, you're obviously relevant for this advert, so I want you high up the rankings, even if you're not prepared to pay as much, you still deserve to be quite high for this particular search. So that's quality score. Um, is there anything about that that anyone would like to comment upon, discuss? No? Okay. Well, feel free to come back later if, if, if there's anything you want to talk about. So here's a study talking about your relative position in paid search and how likely you are to get clicked on. And as we could all probably have predicted, there's a substantial drop-off from position one. So once you're basically out of the first three positions, you become increasingly unlikely to be clicked on. The same phenomenon happens in natural search. The first two or three results are by far the most clicked on. Then it kind of trails off into insignificance. Very similar here. So when you're thinking about this, you, th you therefore need to bear in mind that you know, it's your decision, but maybe if I can't be in the top three for something, it's perhaps it's not even worth bidding for that key phrase. The reason I say that, remember, quality score takes into account your click-through history. So if in your campaign you are bidding for really competitive keywords where you're never going to be one, two, and three because you can't afford to, that cost per click, it's something to bear in mind and how to address it we'll talk later, that continuing to chase those keywords means that your advert will generally appear quite low, position 789. It will therefore very rarely be clicked on which therefore means your quality score will gradually drop because your click-through history is going down, 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 down. Which is, you know, it's a negative cycle and it means that you, you, you know, it's just going to get worse and worse and the, and the price you have to pay is going to go up and up. So that's an argument for perhaps finding a way, and there are ways, of, of um, saying only show my advert if I am in positions one or three. Otherwise, don't show my advert because I'm, I'm not interested, because I'm, I, I want to preserve my quality score, and I don't want to be in position six, seven, eight, because I know that's going to hurt the quality score. That's something, you don't have to do that, it's just something to think about. Is this site-specific or campaign-specific? So uh, if you've run successful campaigns before with high click-through rates, will that have a positive impact on future ones, or is it completely separate? It's, it's, it's to your account. Oh, okay. So it's fine. It runs across everything. So a login will have a quality score. Within your login, you'll have campaigns. They will also have quality scores. If you run... So it's some mixture of those. And then even each key phrase will have a quality score. But okay. If you run campaigns for different things, if you effectively got a yes. kind of Google Master kind of access. So if you've got a website with not very good keywords and not very good campaigns, it has a knock-on effect to other ones. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Because let's, for example, say you're a freelancer. And, you, and you've got two companies and you're managing both their paid search and you're choosing to manage it through one login on Google, then one's really well managed because they pay you enough to actually look at it properly and they take it seriously and one's a shambles. Okay? Google will know that. So this quality score will be higher than this quality score but it, this will also be dragged down by having this in the same login. So in an ideal world, you'd keep it separate. Okay. But e exactly where that, you know, where that line is, 
between how much does this get dragged down by this shambles, nobody knows, but it will have an impact. Because as far as Google is concerned, all of that is one account. Combining all those variables together, um, how do they... Like a variable soup. Yeah, exactly. How, how do they come to a decision as to what these metrics and how do they quantify? I mean, not exactly, but do they quantify as, as opposed to it being a relatively subjective decision? Oh, no, no. It has to be automated. Yeah. I mean, it's all automated. It's Google. So they do use metrics because they can tell how many times they've shown the advert. That's impressions. They can measure how many times they've clicked through, click-throughs. So that's easy for a start. So that's numbers. I mean, the the formula they apply to the numbers, who knows, in terms of the exact balance. Um, in terms of the content, that's numbers again. That's the number of times words appear on the page. So it's, if the words that appear on the page in Google's opinion, I say opinion, it's not really, it's a computer program. So you, your site might talk about city cars. This is an example. And your advert might talk about city cars. The audience has searched for small car. Okay? So at least they both have the term car in, so there's some relevance there. If in the Google brain, small car and city car are basically the same, then you'll get a high quality score because it's about the same topic. If for whatever reason Google hasn't made that connection, then the quality score would be lower. In that example, the more similar you are, the better, which is very often why if you were bidding, um, if you were you know, very, very carefully managing your campaign <coughs> for each potential key phrase, small car, city car, urban car, you would actually have a, 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 a in, in the extreme case, a unique advert written for each of them, and in the, in the extreme case, a unique landing page written for each of them. No one's got that kind of time, but that would be the ideal situation because then you're, you're providing Google with a very, very clear indication that this is seamless and it's all about the same thing, and then so is this, and then so is this. Market share in the UK, as opposed to anarchy in the UK. And you can see here that Google, at the moment, rules the roost. Um, AdWords is the name of the tool... Um, that you use to manage your Google paid search. Y Yahoo and Microsoft are both run by Bing, Chandler's namesake from Friends, if anyone's interested. And that is run by a tool called Ad Center. They're both you know, reasonably similar. They run according to the same principles. It's not really, it's not really a big problem. And Yahoo is um, run off the same engine, the Bing search engine, as Microsoft. So if you advertise if you, if you run a campaign in Bing, as an example, it will appear on bing.com, bing.co.uk, and also yahoo.co.uk, because they're drawing it from the same pool. One thing that, well, a couple of things that are good to bear in mind, this is UK specific, so if you're an international company, you know, working in different markets, you need to bear in mind that different markets have different splits in terms of search engines. In the US, the Bing engine is larger than it is here. It's got about 10 to 12% of the market share because they've done a huge marketing campaign in America. Equally, um, local players within Europe and indeed beyond will have strong local search engines, such as, for instance, Russia, Yandex, Czech Republic, Seznam. So you would need to do your research into the local market before you um, assume that Google owns, owns the whole space, which is unlikely. One other quick thing to point out, I, mean, I, and I am as guilty of it as anybody, we tend to use Google as shorthand for search engines because it basically rules the universe at the moment, which is fair enough. However, if you think about it, it's logical to think that most people who are doing paid search are doing it on Google, not unreasonably. Quite a lot of people who are doing paid search aren't doing it on Bing because they can't be bothered, frankly, because you've got to have two campaigns, two accounts, you know, twice the management. It's a hassle, which means that when you are running a campaign on Google, you are bidding against the world. I mean, maybe only the UK, but you're still bidding against everyone who wants a search campaign. When you're bidding on Bing, you may not be. You may only be bidding against people who can be bothered to have you know, two different campaigns running and manage two campaigns. So you can very often get better value for money by having a campaign on Bing because not everyone else does. So therefore, the bidding process doesn't go as high, so you get cheaper prices per click-through. So there's often value to be had uh, to run a campaign on Bing, though you have to... It's your own decision about whether or not it's worth the investment of time that it, it will take to, to manage two campaigns. Bing will probably get larger because every you know, Windows 7 platform that gets released will be sort of released with Internet Explorer 8 that has sort of a default engine of Bing. And if you download ABG 8 or 9, I think it is the latest version, downloads Yahoo as the default search engine, which I wasn't very happy about last week. But yeah, so all the defaults that come in just kind of push... Bing, where 
you know, if, if you're not really web savvy, you wouldn't really notice what you're using. Yeah, no, I wouldn't so disagree. I mean, and obviously Microsoft are doing that for the reason they want to dislodge Google. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if history is any guide, Microsoft will put up a strong fight against Google. Absolutely. Personally, I think the Google Chrome browser is probably the best one out there anyway. So I'd, I'd use Google Chrome. But whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Um, so, decisions in paid search. These are going to be quite important, obviously. So, which key phrases are we going to try and bid for? Which are we going to buy? So, where, in response to which searches should our advert appear? It's going to be important. How much are we willing to pay for each click? Again, it's going to be a very important decision. And ultimately, it's going to be down to business logic, business objectives. So, that's kind of your decision. Adverts, you know, what's the message? How do we write a good advert? To be fair, all of these considerations are ones which we are going to talk about and offer an element of guidance on. So, before we get into the brass tacks and the nitty gritty, is there anything that anyone would like to comment upon before we really start seriously looking at how to run a paid search campaign? Yes. 